when we first started learning about fractions or rational numbers, we learned about the idea of putting things in lowest terms. So if we saw something like 3, 6, we knew that 3 and 6 share a common factor. We know that the numerator, well, 3 is just 3, but that 6 could be written as 2 times 3. And say since they share a common factor, the 3 in this case, we could divide the numerator by 3 and the denominator by 3. Or we could say that this is just 3 over 3. And they would cancel out. And in lowest terms, this fraction would be 1 half. Or just to kind of hit the point home, if we had 8 over 8 over 24, once again, we know that this is the same thing as 8 over 3 times 8, or this is the same thing as 1 over 3 times 8 over 8. The 8's cancel out, and we get this in lowest terms as 1 third. The same exact idea applies to rational expressions. These are rational numbers. Rational expressions are essentially the same thing, but instead of the numerator being an actual number and the denominator being an actual number, they're expressions involving variables. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's say I had let's say that I had 9x 9x plus 3 over over 12x plus 4. Now this numerator up here, we can factor it. We can factor out a 3. This is equal to 3 times 3x plus 1. That's what our numerator is equal to. And our denominator, we can factor out a 4. This is the same thing as 4 times 3x. 3x, 12 divided by 4 is 3. 12x over 4 is 3x plus 4 divided by 4 is 1. So here, just like there, the numerator and the denominator have a common factor. In this case, it's 3x plus 1. In this case, it's a rational, it's a, it's a variable expression. It's not an actual number. But we can do the exact same thing. They cancel out. So if we were to write this rational expression in lowest terms, we could say that this is equal to 3 over 4. That's equal to 3 over 4. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. Let's say that we had, let's say that we had x squared, let me see a good one. So let's say we had x squared, x squared minus 9 over 5x plus 15. Over 5x plus 15. So what is this going to be equal to? What is this going to be equal to? So the numerator, we can factor. It's a difference of squares. We have x plus 3 times x minus 3. And in the denominator, we can factor a 5 out. So this is 5 times x plus 3. So once again, common factor in the numerator and in the denominator, we can cancel them out. But we touched on this a couple of videos ago. We have to be very careful. We can cancel them out. We can say that this is going to be equal to x minus 3 over 5. But we have to exclude the, the, the values of x that would have made this denominator equal to 0, that would have made the entire expression undefined. So we could write this as being equal to x minus 3 over 5, but x cannot be equal to negative 3. Negative 3 would make this 0, or it would make this whole thing 0. So this and this whole thing are equivalent. This is not equivalent to this right here, because this is defined at x is equal to negative 3, while this isn't defined at x is equal to negative 3. So to make them the same, I also have to add the, 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 uh, extra, the extra condition that x cannot equal negative 3. And so likewise, over here, if this was a function, if this was, let's say this was, we wrote y is equal to 9x plus 3 over 12x plus 4, and we wanted to graph it. When we simplify it, the temptation is, oh, well, you know, we factored out a 3x plus 1 in the numerator and the denominator. They cancel out. The temptation is to say, well, this is the same graph as y is equal to the constant 3 fourths, which is just a horizontal line at y is equal to 3 fourths. But we have to add one condition. We have to eliminate, we have to exclude the x values that would have made this thing right here equal to 0. And that would have been 0 if x is equal to negative 1 third. If x is equal to negative 1 third, this or this denominator would be equal to 0. 
So even over here, we'd have to say x cannot be equal to negative 1 3rd. That condition is what really makes is what really makes this is what really makes that equal to that, that x cannot be equal to negative 1 3rd. Let's do a couple more of these. And I'll do these in pink. Let's say that I had, let's say that I had x squared, x squared plus 6x plus 8 over, over x squared plus 4x. Or actually, even better. Let me, let me do this a little bit. x squared plus 6x plus 5 over, over x squared minus x minus 2. So once again, we want to factor the numerator and the denominator, just like we did with traditional numbers when we first learned factoring, when we first learned about fractions in lowest terms. So if we factor the numerator, what two numbers, when I multiply them equal 5, and I add them equal 6? Well, the numbers that pop into my head are 5 and 1. So the numerator is x plus 5 times x minus 1. And then our denominator, two numbers. Multiply negative 2, add them negative 1. Negative 2 and positive 1 pop out of my head. Negative, oh, this is a positive 1, right? x plus 5 times x plus 1, right? 1 times 5 is 5. 5x five plus 1x is 6x. So here we have negative, we have a, a positive 1 and a negative 2. So x minus 2 times x plus 1 times x plus 1. So we have a common factor in the numerator and the denominator. These cancel out. So you could say that this is equal to x plus 5 over x minus 2. But for them to really be equal, we have to add the condition. We have to add the condition that x cannot be equal to negative 1. We cannot, because if x is equal to negative 1, this is undefined. We have to add that condition because this by itself is defined at x is equal to negative 1. You could put negative 1 here, and you're going to get a number. But this is not defined at x is equal to negative 1, so we have to add this condition for this to truly be equal to that.